Thank you, Chair. Uh, actually, <coughs> I uh, have shifted from the previous uh, session to this session, uh, and uh, that's the reason why I guess uh, the subject is uh, somewhat different. Uh, we uh, uh, had uh, two speakers, one looking at India-Japan and the other one on uh, Central Asia. So in that session, I was kind of placed uh, in the context of the uh, how various uh, uh, regions in Asia, whether we're talking about uh, Central Asia, West Asia, and Japan, uh, who are the Asian powers as such. In that context, actually, uh, my presentation uh, was placed. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to look at is basically uh, how India has approached this region, what this, how do I, you know, as a researcher view uh, the developments in the region, uh, and uh, what is the present government's policy approach, how is it different from the past, uh, and uh, what are the uh, areas where you know the Asian powers can collectively work together in the region which is very very crucial uh, when we are talking about India when we are talking about China Japan and Korea uh, all uh, four countries uh, have interest in uh, uh, you know stabilizing this country I mean to in to see that this country uh, is stable the, these countries in the region are stable and and uh, uh, because of their common economic and energy interests that all the four countries have. Uh, uh, so with that, I have divided my presentation in three uh, parts mainly. Uh, the first part deals with the uh, how this region, as uh, the chair has already pointed out, and, and I think there is a general perception uh, that this is an area which is volatile, chaotic, uh, and uh, in turmoil. Uh, so uh, the second part I look at uh, to place India in the context of how, uh, you know, present government's uh, policy, the foreign policy, uh, especially in the West Asian region is unfolding in the context of what is known as the key features of the Modi doctrine and how that is dealt and then placing them in that context. And finally looking at uh, India and the West Asian region, what are its stakes, uh, uh, what is its current policy approach, uh, what are the challenges and opportunities and and then the way ahead and the prognosis. Uh, as a researcher, when I look at the region, uh, actually, you know, I feel that uh, uh, it would be unfair to uh, to to club, uh, you know, uh, the whole set of uh, you know region and calling them the region is in turmoil. So, from my point of view, when I look at West Asia and uh, what we call North Africa, West Asia and North African region, I have divided them into three uh, areas. One is the comparatively stable countries. Uh, the other set is the countries, uh, you know, which are exposed to uh, major challenges. And the third set of countries are the countries which are actually in turmoil and have been uh, named as the failing states as well uh, by the uh, by the researchers and the uh, experts who've been writing on it. So in the first set of uh, the uh, you know, uh, comparatively stable countries, I have put UAE, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Ku Kuwait, Qatar, Turkey, Israel, Egypt, and Tunisia. Uh, the second set of countries, I see Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, and the third set of countries are Syria, Iraq, Yemen, and Libya. Now, this is not to, this is not to say that the challenges are not there. This is also not to say the new crisis which is evolving is not there. But this is also to indicate that, you know, it would be uh, technically wrong to say the entire region is going to explode uh, tomorrow. I don't think, uh, from my point of view, uh, I look at it uh, in that, uh, that way. Uh, if we also look at a region, I think this is a region which is most unpredictable. Uh, I also feel that this is a region which uh, is going through, uh, I mean, the period where you have these strategic surprises. Uh, also strategic constraints, I would say. Uh, and this is a region where I see the old order actually, uh, you know, sort of failing, uh, where the new order is still being shaped. Uh, if we see the old order, obviously this was military alliances, power dynamics was the key feature. Uh, social and economic challenges were overlooked. 
and this of course created some kind of a disorder uh, so if we if we say the new order is in making what are the key features of this new order which is still in making i see the first and the foremost the key uh, actor i think has been and it continues to be is the united states and the united states uh, you know policy towards the region definitely you know uh, shapes uh, many other uh, you know factors and we have seen the change in the us policy uh, the regional geopolitics is influencing the global affairs uh, this is the second feature i would say the third is the reentry of russia in the region uh, and basically to protect its interests and uh, interest and strategic uh, assets uh, iran definitely has emerged as a influential player uh, you know despite many efforts to contain iran uh that is uh, the other one the 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 next uh, feature that i would like to bring about is the role of turkey and especially after its misadventure in syria and how its <laughs> regional policy is going to be shaped uh that is still in uh, making uh saudi arabia's assertive regional policy and what we see is the new social contract as well i'm not going to dwell on the you know detail here but i'll just flag this points to bring as to how you know these challenges uh, probably would have an implication and impact uh, for for india when we are looking at the region uh, the current crisis in uh, qatar uh, you know the divided gcc is of course uh, a major uh, crisis which is still uh, to be resolved and finally the increasing involvement of the asian players so these are some of the key features that uh, one has to take into account when we are looking at the west asian region uh, so let me come to the uh, the uh, the main uh, uh, you know uh, presentation that uh, i am going to make is is going to be more focused on india uh, and if we look at uh, how india has approached there has definitely been uh, a refocus on the region and if we look at the overall uh, you know uh, present government's policy uh, the modi doctrine or uh, you know what has how uh, how president uh, prime minister modi has been looking at uh, the foreign policy so the key features that i can you know summarize uh, through the various speeches that uh, uh, you know you read uh, and the way it is evolving the first i think the feature is tight meshing of domestic and diplomatic goals the second of course is first india mantra of protecting india's uh, strategic interest by developing uh, proactive diplomatic uh, strategies that actually deliver the international status that india desires uh third focus on using international partnerships to uh, advance uh, country's economic growth and development a uh, neighborhood first uh, policy where cooperation connectivity and people to people cooperation uh, have been the key features there uh, diplomatic uh, you know activism uh, the high level visits uh, manage differences and expand areas of cooperation this is what it is uh, terrorism has been central to uh, the engagements that uh, we see today managing counter terrorism cooperation a key element in many of india's bilateral interaction if you uh, see focus on the indian diaspora for building india's uh, economy its image and influence and finally i call it uh, three c's which is cooperation connectivity and uh, capacity building uh, so if we look at the larger context and we now place west asia in this uh, what is uh, what uh, what uh, exactly has been the engagement of the present uh, government uh, as far as west asia is concerned so i would say the focus on developing new uh, strategic partners to secure basically india's economic interests uh, and i will i will come to the other uh, issues later uh, and secondly to boost uh, cooperation with countries uh, with potential to contribute to india's economy and here i would give uh, the example of uh, you know prime minister modi's visit to uae saudi arabia iran qatar israel uh, non intervention and enhancing defense and security cooperation has been the key feature of the uh, india's approach towards the west asian region and uh, we do see diplomatic uh, 
high uh, active uh, uh, you know, engagement, uh, whether we are looking at uh, the uh, visits from India to the region or from the region to India. So this is, uh, this is of course, the new dimension, I would say. And uh, India, if we, if we actually have to, uh, you know, put uh, India's policy in, in one line, I would, I would say we have moved from look west to think west and now to link west. This is uh, how I would uh, summarize uh, the approach uh, towards the region. Uh, my main argument when I'm looking at India's, uh, you know, engagement and involvement uh, in the West Asian region, I uh, have argued uh, that India needs to readjust its policy, adopt new ways of engagement and sustain the current momentum of engagement with the region to draw on advantages and evade disadvantages. Uh, because when we look at India, although, you know, we talk about seven, eight million peoples living there, uh, so there are uh, opportunities, but there are limitations as well. Uh, in coming years, we also need to see the role of the Asian powers, particularly India and China, is likely to grow in West Asian <coughs> region, uh, despite its strong military and uh, strategic ties with the uh, United States and the West. Uh, more importantly, I would say from the perspective of the major Asian economies, uh, uh, where I, I did mention South Korea, India, Japan, and China, uh, I think instability in the region definitely is not uh, in the interest of all four countries. So uh, there, is a t there is definitely uh, a, a, a time when uh, all the countries need to, uh, you know, think about some kind of a consensus. Uh, and at track two level, uh, this effort has already been initiated, uh, and let us hope that uh, it uh, it goes at uh, also up to the track one when it comes to this the West Asian region. Uh, although India Japan are cooperating, India China are cooperating, India Korea are cooperating, but when you are talking about the West Asian region, I do feel that uh, there is a there is a need uh, at least. Uh, uh, to think on on these lines, and this uh, is what uh, is my main uh, argument. If we look at what are the major stakes uh, when we are looking at India's uh, involvement in West Asia, these are mainly for uh, security interests, economic interest, trade driven by trade and energy, uh, India's uh, you know eight million people who are living there, uh, religious and cultural linkages. So. Uh, if we, if, we, if we really narrow down to what are the security interests, the key theme, as I said, even uh, in the uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, overall foreign policy approach, when you look at this has been, uh, terrorism uh, has been the major theme there. And in that context, what we see is this region is also volatile when we are talking about uh, the impact of the implications of the major threats uh, of uh, Al-Qaeda and Islamic states and many other jihadi groups that are there. So uh, rising uh, extremism, uh, you know, uh, these uh, fundamentalist, uh, you know, radical groups, uh, I think they are just not challenged for India and the region but for the entire world. So this is a, this is a key uh, interest as far as uh, uh, and we need to uh, work together with uh, with the West Asian countries to address it. Uh, India, uh, even the joint statements that you, which we are not going to go, but it definitely very clearly uh, clarify that this remains a key component of our cooperation with them. Uh, India looks at the Gulf states as a regional part of a fight, for, for partner for fighting terrorism and extremism. It has enhanced, enhanced its security. Uh, partnership with the Gulf states. If you look at all the joint statements uh, which uh, Prime Minister Modi has signed uh, either with uh, uh, UAE or with Saudi Arabia, uh, I think uh, one uh, can really uh, see the key areas uh, which have which find place in this. Uh, these statements are counterterrorism, cyber security, sea lanes. Uh, sea lane communication, anti-piracy measures, uh, terror financing, money laundering, so on and so forth. So any, uh, there are many, uh, one, what, what I was, I'm trying to highlight is this is one of the key areas uh, which we are looking at. Uh, second important, uh, uh, you know, area 
which needs attention here is the kind of economic interest which India has uh, in the region. And the GCC countries particularly are India's largest trading partner if we look at the, I'll, sh I'll come back to the graph and show you, but if we look at the top five uh, trading partners uh, of India, uh, Saudi Arabia and the UAE are there. The U UAE is the third uh, in terms of ranking, uh, which accounts for almost 7.73 percent share, uh, and uh, the Saudi Arabia uh, is is uh, is uh, his ra its ranking is fourth, uh, which accounts for 4.15 percent share. Uh, so, the top the numbers have been changed. UAE, UAE has come down come down to the uh, to actually third ranking and today you have China and United States as the major trading partner. But uh, this is to highlight that these are the two countries with which India has a major uh, trade uh, when we are looking uh, at the overall uh, trade uh, figures. Uh, India's economic engagements uh, with the region were dominated uh, by the two challenges as well if you are looking at 15 and 16. And these are basically continuing global economic slowdown and the falling oil prices. Uh, if, if we look at uh, the graph, you would see the trade, uh, you know, coming down. But here the two bars that you see uh, of UAE and Saudi Arabia, they are the ones who uh, in the sub-region, if you see, they're the major trading partner in that sense. So this is what I wanted to highlight here. These are the the, uh, the trade figures from 10 to 16, which say, of course, the you know they have been an important uh, partner in terms of trade uh, and energy partnership. This is the uh, you know this uh, particular chart I wanted to uh, to show is uh, simply because Iran and Iraq have you know come down drastically when we look at the 15, 16 figures, the Iraq has come to the 15th position and Iran is on the 22nd position. Uh, as I said, third and fourth position, of course, uh, is, is that of uh, UAE and uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, religious and cultural linkages uh, actually are also a key component of India's policy towards the West Asia uh, region as such. India, we all know, hosts the largest Muslim population in the world. Uh, it views Saudi Arabia as its important uh, pilgrimage because of the holy uh, shrine of Makkah and Medina. We have huge flow of uh, people uh, to Saudi Arabia. The, the cultural and the religious aspect of the people-to-people -people ties between two countries uh, form a significant uh, part of the overall relations with the uh, Saudi uh, Kingdom. Energy dependence, I think, is uh, again uh, a very, very important factor which cannot be overlooked. And uh, many of our uh, five more minutes uh, uh, we cannot uh, overlook. And uh, this is the major source of uh, hydrocarbon supplies to us. Uh, the connectivity, I think, uh, is something which is, uh, if we look at the figures, there are 700 flights a week between India and UAE. That's the kind of relationship we are talking about. So if we look at the policy approach, uh, I, as I said, uh, that there has been increasing diplomatic activism towards uh, the region. Uh, in the initial, the first year, uh, you know, uh, when uh, we read the statements, we, as I mentioned, it was neighborhood first and then the um, East Asia and the third uh, position was that of the Persian Gulf. Uh, however, you know, in the second year, I think there was a greater engagement uh, with the region and that uh, refocus and can be is, is visible with the uh, not only the visits and even uh, even the way uh, the uh, the West Asian uh, leadership also uh, wanted to engage India. So that uh, is there. Uh, I think just three points uh, on how India looks at uh, the, uh, what is its position on, on political transition and external intervention, which is non-interfering, non-prospective and non-judgmental. Uh, the position on the Palestinian issue, I would say, is balanced yet different. Uh, this is how uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, diplomatic engagement has increased uh, with the with the region. Uh, 
what is more important is how gulf views india and i think this is this is uh, where uh, you see a uh, change uh, there was a time that india was not such a significant partner but i think now uh, under their look uh, east policy india has become an important uh, partner for them uh, and there is a greater desire on part of the gulf uh, region uh, to see india's greater involvement uh, in the region uh and uh, they are now uh, where they are looking at diversifying their relationships with uh, other countries while maintaining their ties uh, with the united states and the other countries so uh often there is a complaint by the west asian uh, you know uh, countries that india needs to be much more active and in the region uh, it, while its economic leg is much more stronger but the strategic ties are not so significant and i think if we if we look at modi's initiative uh, he has tried to build on the strategic component of it uh, there are major challenges for india and i I'll, uh, i'll i'll just highlight some of them one is of course to ensure the security of the 8 million people uh, you know also ensure its energy security and um, mitigate the negative impact uh, of the e- extremist groups like islamic state and al qaeda uh, and the most important uh, i think a uh, point here is how uh, india balances its relations between iran and saudi arabia in a situation when there is uh, a major confrontation between the two countries so far india has able to manage it uh, but let's see how it goes in future Uh, and now with the divided gcc i think there is a challenge also to address this uh, issue uh, and uh, manage its ties with israel while maintaining its commitment to these to the palestinian cause uh, there are many opportunities now when we are looking at there are new areas of cooperation which have been identified uh, which are agriculture it infrastructure security service sector education uh there are also areas particularly uh which have been identified like pharmaceutical automobile power and renewable energy uh infrastructure development within india getting more investments from uh, the region and uh, there are prospects of course as i said of uh, engaging the asian uh, players so how do i uh, see the region in future uh regional rivalry for acquiring leadership role in the region will be there uh, big power small power syndrome is something which we will continue to see uh, india saudi confrontation uh, is likely to intensify uh, as, uh, as as i said it is difficult to predict but uh, given the situation today uh, it seems it is going to intensify iran us confrontation uh, mina you will have to please okay, conclude quickly because we are really running uh, out of time and uh, divided gcc external intervention and the larger interest and finally the uh, arms manufacturing lobbies and their interest and the energy geopolitics and with this i end my presentation thank you very much